and I heard a, a pop down in there somewhere and then I got a big puff of white smoke out of the pony motor exhaust pipe. Man, I'm pissed. All right, so this is the magneto. It is what literally creates the spark. So we got one spark plug coming out here, one here. I broke this red one. So we're gonna crack the magneto open and see what it would take to replace that plug wire. Looks like it just plugs in. Okay, it just has a plug on the end of it like a any other spark plug would have. Just this one's a straight in. This is where it broke right here. And it's just so brittle that it just snaps way too hard for any plug wire really and in here it's got like brushes it's like carbon brush three of them obviously two of them are from the wires plug wires these two and they spin on this disc and there's a set of points in there and the condenser I see down there I'm by no means an expert on how a magneto works this is the magneto cover for the actual one that's on the machine and obviously this wire just snapped into pieces I mean it was just so brittle so we're gonna have to replace that the other one's not bad, but I did go through some of the extra parts and stuff I have. This is just a piece of plug wire, or a yeah, spark plug wire, and I've got some actual spark plugs, and then some of these are some of the old ones that came with the cat. Um, I couldn't find another red one, but I might make this orange one work in place of it. Uh, it does already have the straight connectors, so the straight connectors basically push into these, and then they've usually got a 90 and the 90 kind of like one of these will go into the plug wire on the machine so my plan is to basically take some of these pieces off of some of these other ones and reuse the ends on some new wires so I'm gonna work on that right now and then I need like you know these caps because the wires that I was using didn't have the caps and so we're going to add them just because we've got them. So we'll just peel this back. Cut the wire. And then pull this plug cap. Like that. So we'll reuse this for now. Even though it isn't brand new, it'll be better than nothing. And then I also went and grabbed my other magneto. We're going to open this up. And for whatever reason, I actually had an extra cover, but the cover is actually missing the middle brush. So, I don't know if it's good or not, but we're going to open that one up and take a look at it and see if it's any better. So the way this plug-end works is, essentially, this would go over the spark plug-end or fit into a certain section. 
but the other end has a little barb right there, that little triangle piece, and that punches into the plug wire, getting down into the middle where the wire is actually past the insulation, and then these arms crimp around it, holding it tight. And so then that way, when the electrical signal goes through the plug wire, it then is connected to this plug, and then this plug is what actually transmits it into the spark plug or coming out of the magneto. And so we're gonna reuse this end so that we have so a straight one. So we can plug straight into the magneto rather than having a 90. Pretty simple setup. And this one's in pretty good shape. It's actually brass, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this 90 on this end for the actual spark plug side. And then this straight side will be what we add. I peeled back some of the wire in the actual um, spark plug wire. I'm gonna fold it back over so it's also contacting through that and not just pierced through. Probably be fine just pierced through, but I don't see any harm in this either. All right. Two new plug wires. The red one was a little longer than the black one, so then I just marked them with some tape for now. It'll be fine. So now we're gonna clean up this, take a look inside, and see if it's any better than the other one. Caterpillar. MJK4 slash 2360D47. Magneto. This gasket's better than the one that was on the machine. There's a bunch of teeth on a gear in there. Let's see if I can get you close enough. See that little gear down there? Those teeth are just sheared off. This big gear on the back doesn't want to rotate all the way around for some reason. So, this little thing down here is called the condenser. And then these are the points. So when this is supposed to turn, oh, I can see some big teeth on the top are all messed up too, up there. And then what happens is this discon er, uh, breaks contact, makes contact, breaks contact, makes contact as it's spinning. And what that's doing is it's pulsing the connection so that the spark plug gets electricity when it needs it. It fires, controls when it fires. This is how it was done before electronic ignition. points that's what it's called so a lot of times it happens between the two points between these two contacts on this side here and this side here corrosion builds up between them 
And so you have to clean that to be able to get good contact so that you're not, you know, so it's not corroded or, or whatever. And that's a, it's a large problem with, with points, but it's not too big of a deal. And then this little condenser can go bad too. Um, but this one, <laughs> the inside of it looks worse than the other one that's on the machine. Although this disc may look better. I'm going to have to take it out there and go look. Because I the, the magneto is still on the machine. And even this, this cover, these brushes look better than these. These brushes are worn down further. So I may use this other cover and its gasket. This is one of the studs that holds in the pony motor breather slash oil fill and it is bent slightly I don't know if you can quite tell but and so instead of reusing this I'm gonna take a piece of all thread we're gonna cut it to length and I'm gonna use that instead so it should be fine doing that sometimes to cut all thread it's best to put a couple nuts on it so that you don't mar up the threads when you clamp it into a vise. Now we'll clean up the end on the belt sander. Since we're already this far in, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and take the carburetor off one more time and check it and make sure there's no issue there. So we'll take a quick peek in this and just see if there's anything to be alarmed about. Make a quick gasket for the bottom of the throttle body. There we go. Well, a quick look in this throttle body. I don't think there's any issues with it. Seems to be working fine. I'd like to get a carb kit for this thing. Not sure what model it is. It's a Zenith carburetor. Maybe the number is uh, 5F3527. But then there's a 103680 with an X. I'm assuming maybe that's the number. So I need to find a carb kit for this. I'd like to get one anyway. I think it'll be fine to put it back together the way it is for now. Wouldn't be an old red video if we didn't have a broken bolt to remove. Right here, broken bolt. And so what I think was happening, I think that this part of the exhaust pipe wasn't able to make full contact because it wasn't tight. I think that was causing oil to leak out and just drain the oil out of this machine so, or the pony motor so much faster. So it's recessed. I'm gonna try the torque bit trick 
and hopefully it works. We'll see. So we're going to give it a shot. Look at that little chip. This hole that had the broken bolt in it, I fought with it for quite some time, ended up messing the hole up. And so what I ended up doing, and I did it off camera because it was a lot of work, I re-drilled it out and tapped it for a one half 20 bolt. And so obviously it's a pretty big step up from what was there, but it now has good threads and it's gonna make a seal. I also had to drill this hole out up to a half inch because it wasn't big enough so what i decided to do was instead of putting a stud in there like that i'm going to use a bolt but the problem with a bolt is that when i put it into this hole in the actual exhaust manifold here it'll only go down about that far so what i did was i made a little spacer on the back side of it, I ground it down so that when I slip it down on, it will not pinch against the, uh, the exhaust manifold there. And so basically what it's going to do is it'll look like the bolt will go through this. It goes down and it fits right up against there, but it, it allows me to tighten that bolt down without contacting anything else. Plus, I can get a socket on that. And so, and it's not, the head of it's not gonna hit anything. And it's extending through, contacting plenty, th plenty of threads to be able to hold it down tight and keep it from leaking. So that's the plan on that one. And then obviously the other one, I'm gonna leave the stud that was in there and just bolt that down, so. All right, we'll put the magneto cover back on. So I went with the extra magneto cover. It was in better shape and cleaned all the cat yellow paint off it so it's got that brown baked light color but I have the other one in case this one doesn't work well so and that's a real easy piece to replace And of course it has to start raining on me. That's all right. Lots of other things to do. So to get the new starter belt on, I had to actually pull the pulley off. And it's kind of mangled up pretty good, but I got it pretty well straightened out. It's a tapered shaft with a keyway in it. I looked for another one that I had and I don't have one that's identical to this, so I'm gonna reuse it, but to get the belt on, I couldn't fit it between this little little uh, cap for the nose cone on the starter and the pulley, so I had to pull it off. So we'll put it on like this. Give it one good smack. Alright, maybe a few good smacks. Now I'm going to put it on with some red thread locker because this... Uh, Nut isn't the greatest. There we go, new starter belt. Wrong belt. I had this small one on here, and that's definitely not the right one. It's this bigger one. So, got it on now.
So that rain turned into a little bit of snow. And the temperature dropped from about 45 degrees down to about 18. Ah, the wonderful weather. Let's get this uncovered and then we'll keep at it. Hi, guy. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. Come here, Bowden. Oh, hi, Scout. Hi, Scout. Hi, Bowden. Come here, Ruby. Come here, Nala. Good girl. Yeah, hi. 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 Yeah, you're a good girl. Come here. Scout. Lena, come here. Come here, Lena. Come on, Lena. Good girl, Lena. Good girl. Hi, pretty girl. Yeah. I know. Hi. Hi. Hi, Nala. Hi, Ruby. Hi, pretty girl. Hi there. Yeah, you're good. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, careful. Down. Down. Hi, Scout. Hi, Lena. Scout. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Hi, Bowden. You're a good boy. Yeah, you're good. Sit. Bowden, sit. Good boy. Good boy, Toby. Hi, buddy boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. What are you hacking up there, Lena? You all right? You okay? Airball? You gonna make it? Huh? You alright? Yeah? Did you just drink too much too quick, huh? Yeah, you good girl. Yeah. For all of you guys that don't know, I have six Weimariners. It's a bit crazy, but I love these dogs. They are actually absolutely extremely intelligent and right here. Right on you at all times. And when they don't want to do that, they wanna run. So that's what they're doing now. Let's get back to the cat. All right, so we got the pulley. Here is the starter belt. Here's the governor belt. We got the, the keyway is in right there. That belt's much tighter. And gasket. The Pony Motors air filter is an oil bath style. This is where the oil goes in. You pull the bottom of the, that off. Loosen this little bait band here. And it gets up and out of our way like that. And then we can pop the bottom off. So 
this is full of oil. And then the air cleaner itself is in there. And so I've already cleaned that. I do think we're going to go ahead and change the oil in this oil bath filter section. Put some new oil in it, and then we're going to put it back on the machine. All right, so got it all clean. Cleaned out all the gunk. That's oil level right there. Fill it up to that line. So basically, right at the top of those holes. So what the oil does is it traps any of the larger particles that come through the air cleaner down into the oil and keeps them trapped so they don't get sucked up into the air cleaner. So then we stick this back down on. And then tighten this band back up. So here's the governor. Here's the new belt. And the way you tension it and tighten it up is you basically, it has two bolts that allows you to just slide this whole mechanism in and out like that. Back and forth, and you pull it tight. Make sure it's straight. Now the belt's tight. All right, we got the dash panels back in. I'm gonna put some gas in it and see if it'll go. Double check the oil. Perfect, right at full. It's not runny like uh, it's full of gas, so that's good. All right, we're gonna turn the fuel on. Still feels good. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. If it has spark, I'm not, I don't think we're getting spark. So spark plug's right here, it's touching the, the head. I'm gonna bump the starter. You probably can't see that, but there is no spark. All right, that means there's something up in the magneto or the plug wires. All right, about the only thing I changed on the Magneto was this cover, and it looked like it had better brushes in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the original cover, and then we'll be able to hopefully eliminate this and look at the wires that we put together. So we're gonna do that now. So I pulled the points and the condenser out of the magneto because I wasn't getting spark. I think that the condenser went bad and popped. I think that might have been the noise I heard. But after I, that pop, I didn't try and start it. I didn't mess with it because I didn't want to damage anything. What I think we're going to do, we're going to pull the other points and the condenser out of the other magneto that I have. And we're going to try that and see if it's any better because it's basically this, this whole setup here. Essentially, there's, there's two screws holding that on. And then there's a, a bolt up here holding the, the wire on. So we're going to pull out the condenser, pull out the, the condenser here and the points, and give the, this a try and see if it fixes our problem. All right, after a bit of research, I figured out that with a magneto, you need a metal core, preferably copper. And so this is not copper. It's I think it it's just a metal. I'm not sure what it is, but... I plan to buy some, some copper plug wires, but this kit is what I could get today. 
and it's a metallic whatever. And so what you do is essentially, I'm gonna take this end off. And we're gonna, we're gonna bend this end at a 90 and that'll be the end that goes on the spark plug. And then we're gonna crimp this end on this over here so that we have the straight end that goes into the magneto. All right, we got the two new wires, got the two straights on this end that'll go into the magneto, into these holes. And we got the two 90s that'll go onto the spark plug on the sides of the pony motor. Now, we're gonna start by using these spark plugs, which were new when I put them in the machine back at the old barn. If we're still having issues, I've got another set of spark plugs. We may put the original condenser and points back in, see if that helps. We're also going to plug in this uh, spark plug tester to see if we can get spark and see it through this. So we're going to try a few things. I'm hoping it just needed a metal core wire for the magneto, but we'll find out. We're going to change the pony motor's oil just one more time. Oil-wise, we're right at the full mark. And we are set up to do a compression test on this cylinder, just to see what we've got. All right, let's see if this uh, cylinder has for compression. What is that, 75, 85, 86? 86 pounds of uh, PSI of compression. All right, now we're set up on the other cylinder. Let's see what it's got. What is that? 75, 80, 85. Yep, so about 80 pounds of pressure. 80 pounds of uh, PSI of compression on that cylinder. Now, one thing you need to know is these Pony motors, they can run on as little compression as as low as, you know, I've heard of 30 PSI. And so being 86 on that side, 75 on this side, it doesn't worry me at all. So that is absolutely great to see now that we got everything back together. All right, now back to getting spark. I got a brand new spark plug here. We're just going to ground it here to the block and see if we got any spark that way. No, no spark there either. When I try and start it, the magneto does not spin. Doesn't spin at all, so I'm wondering why. All right, we're gonna pull the mag out. Didn't really want to have to do this, but the only thing I can figure out There we go. Ah, we might have found our problem. See those teeth on that gear? That's not good. Those are broken. Sure hope that gear in there isn't. But that would definitely cause the magneto to not turn. So luckily we actually have another gear. 
on the other magneto. Right in there, that's the gear that the magneto comes in contact with. Let's turn this over and make sure we don't have any big uh, chunks. missing on that gear. Looks pretty good. Come on. It's great. Creating compression, that's for sure. So far, I see no real bad teeth. Good deal. Not sure what that is. So, when you turn this gear in the back, what happens in there is there's a small gear down here that's directly linked to the shaft, and that turns and engages with a bigger gear up here that then basically allows your points to open and close. And so, it wasn't spinning, it was locked up for some reason. So we're gonna open this up a little further. But it's funny because there's two gears inside of this magneto are fine, but the back one has all the brakes in it. This other magneto that I have, the gears inside it are just, just gone, just completely destroyed. But the gear on the back is perfect. And so we're going to take this gear off of this magneto, clean it up, and then put it on the other magneto. So the other thing that happened, and I'm noticing this just now, is that this shaft got bent. And so it is not spinning perfectly centered anymore. So I may have to do more than just replace the gear. Here's the little gear in there. And here's the big one. Busted one tooth totally out, messed that one up, broke off part of that one. I think that it was sitting like this in there and that other gear on the actual pony motor was spinning right in this gap. And right where that gap is, 
it allowed the other one to spin, but not this one, because this thing was also kind of bent. And so the whole shaft got bent and the gear. I don't know if it'd been that way for a long time. Um, definitely looks like there's wear into these teeth, kind of like it'd been wearing at an angle for a while, and then eventually it just decided to break. That's definitely our spark problem, why we are getting spark. But I think that might also be the pop that I heard. It is definitely in that general area where I, uh, where I heard the sound. It could have been when that gear finally popped off and, and kind of bound up and bent this. And so I just, at that point, I didn't do anything further. I didn't even try and start it again. So we're going to try and put together one good magneto out of all these parts. Okay, I've got both magnetos here, and I kind of tore them apart a little bit. This one is the one that is the extra that I had, and this is the one off the machine. So this one is an MJK 4 2 360 B47. So it's a B47, where this one is also an MJK 4 2 360. It's a D47. And I don't know which one's newer, but they have some differences, with the biggest one being this gear on the one that was on the machine. It has this little just like tensioner. You slide that in, straight in, and it rides in a bearing right there. Where, and on the other one, which is completely toast, it slides in, and then there is a little C-clip, so there's no bearing on this one. It just slides into like, you know, a brass sleeve, like that, spins in there. All right, so way down in there, where you see that coming through, there's a little C-clip that goes on the back of that shaft, keeping it in place. So. I can't just switch everything from the good one, which this was the good one that was on the machine. Everything was good about it, except for that big gear that got busted off. And so I can't just take this and put it in this other one because it doesn't want to fit into that sleeve without binding up. It's just too tight. And so, the only real thing that I can do is to take everything from this one and put it into this one. And so the other issue that we have, this shaft is the one out of the good one. It's the one that had, there we go. So this is the one that had the broken teeth. This shaft is bent right here, just slightly, just up a little bit. And so I can't just reuse this in the other case. So the problem is I then have to now, hopefully, this is identical. So I'm going to take this apart and pull this bearing off of it, take the caps off, clean it up, and hopefully it's identical to what the other one is. And then we'll put this one into this case, put all the other parts back in there, and make this the good one that goes on. So I need to find another smaller gear for the extra magneto and another bigger gear for the extra magneto. And I'm gonna clean up this badge, a little three in one oil and a plastic brush, not wire brush. The outer bearing ring, the bearing race, and the inner is still on there. Slip real sucker.
Here we go. Got the inner ring off. All right, there are two bearings in this magneto that basically ride right here and right here. So I got brand new E15 bearings. One will go there and right in there. So I'm gonna get those put in so we can throw this baby back together. Um, I got a clean piece up. I am gonna use this cover off of the other mag because it has a better seal right here. Uh, I still gotta clean it up on the wire wheel. Gotta clean up the hardware. Gotta clean up this plate. And then we should be ready to rock and roll. Some of the heads of these bolts are kind of mangled up a little bit. So we're gonna clean them up real quick. There we go, a little better. All right, so we got all the parts that are ready to go back together in the mag. It's a good healthy mix of uh, parts from each of the two magnetos. The original case, the original inner gears, some of the original bolts. This is an original piece. This is from the extra, 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 the extra set of points, extra condenser, extra cover. Gaskets are from the extra. So we're gonna test the, uh, the points real quick and the condenser before we go putting those in. All right, so this is the condenser and the condenser is essentially a capacitor type um, electrical component and so what you do is you, you go to ohms and you take and you put one connection on the body basically grounding it and the other connection on the other connection what you want to see is you want to see it to start to go up and we're not let's try the other one for shits and giggles all right, so we're on ohms. Actually, it could be grounding out here on this aluminum. Let's see if that's a problem. Yeah, that's our problem. So we're charging that capacitor. And now if we stick it back onto volts DC, And now it's coming down, showing that there is a charge and we're depleting it by holding this here. So this is a good capacitor. Let's go back to the one we used first. Since the aluminum plate's not what we want. So we're gonna go back to ohms. One connection there, other one on the body. All right, good, it's built, building voltage. Hold it there, we'll go to 10-ish. All right, now we're gonna go back to voltage DC. Make sure it has voltage and we'll deplete. Good. Perfect, so that's fine. All right, now we're gonna test just to make sure that the points are opening and closing and getting contact. So we've got the red one hooked to one side of the points and we're going to take our black lead we've got it on ohms we're going to put it here so right now we've got contact so when i separate the points it should be open then it closes and we got full contact open close open close so essentially the points make connection release make connection release make connection release so those are working properly. Start by putting a little grease on these bearings.
old broken gear, non-broken gear. All right, so we'll properly gap the points once we get it back on the machine and get it all wired up and hooked up. All right, so we got the magneto all put back together. It's operating just like it should. Obviously, we don't know if it's working perfectly properly until we get it on the machine. But, we have a straight shaft, we have a non-broken gear, new bearings, better points, better condenser, better brushes on this cover. There's no reason it shouldn't work well. Now, one thing to note. I could just bolt this right on right now. I've got everything set up, and I want to so bad. I want to finish this up. I want to get it running. But this gear, it did not break for no reason. It didn't just randomly break a tooth off and bend that armature shaft. It most likely would have happened is there is play in the crankshaft. And so there's a bearing on the front side of the engine. It's basically the furthest toward the front of the tractor that can go bad and the very top of it there's a pin that retains that crankshaft what can happen is that pin either pops out or gets ruined or gets stripped out and so as much as i don't want to tear everything down to get in there i'm going to so the plan is now we got the mag ready to rock and roll i seriously wanted by the end of this video to have this thing started and rocking but the smart thing to do here is to take all the components back off the top, take the cover off the pony motor, and just see what's going on on that back side of that shaft. And just at that point, we'll know how much work it's going to take to repair that bearing or the bushing or the pin or whatever the heck is going on in there. Because if I stick this in there, it may work for a while and it may take quite a while to maybe bind up or mess up, but I really don't want to risk it. I don't have another magneto, I don't have the parts to make another one, and so at this point it would just be smart to just get in there, fix the problem that caused this to break, and then we'll be 100% confident that the pony motor is ready to rock and roll and won't have any issues moving forward. Everything else that I've seen on the pony motor has been absolutely excellent. This is definitely the pop that I heard, is this binding, breaking, and then and bending that shaft. And then, like I said, the reason I didn't initially think the Magneto was, you know, I never tried to start it after that. I didn't know I didn't have spark. And so I tore everything else off, put it all back, and then figured out I had this problem. Whatever, it'll be some extra work. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. I now know how it all works and goes on and off. I'll get it off a lot quicker this time.
So yeah, the next part is going to be basically tearing the top of the pony motor off and just kind of diagnosing what's going on inside and figuring out how to correct the problem. So I appreciate everybody following along on the journey. It has been longer and harder than I wanted it to be, but if you guys are still enjoying it, I mean, I'm having a great time. I truly am learning a lot in this project and on this old machine. And so thank you for your support. Thank you for sticking around with me and kind of you know, wrenching here in the shop with me and working on Old Red. It's definitely been a lot of fun. So, more to come. Next up, we'll be tearing the top off the pony motor. So, you guys have a great one. I'll talk to you soon.